It seems like every time someone asks me how to do something in Obsidian, my answer is there's a plugin for that. And that's because the plugin ecosystem for Obsidian has exploded. No other note taking tool has this many plugins. That's part of Obsidian's appeal, but you can't or really shouldn't install all of them. Some of them are very niche or specific to different use cases than what you have. And also some others are very complex. So in this video, I'm going to show you every single plugin that I currently have installed in my main Obsidian Vault. Let's get started right away. So it looks like I've got 49 plugins installed. Installed, not enabled, and I'll go through those when I get to them. The first is Admonition. I'm going to be going through some of these very quickly, especially if I've already created videos on them. Admonition is something that I tackled in the callouts video, so go check that out. It is basically a way to enhance and extend the callouts functionality of Obsidian. So you can kind of create your own callout types, which is awesome. So I use that. This is also created by Jeremy Valentine, TTRPG plugin extraordinaire. There's also advanced slides. I have a video on this. I make all of my presentations on this. This is a way to essentially use Reveal.js as a base to create presentations that use Markdown. So you can actually do this with the core plugin slides in Obsidian, but advanced slides just lets you control the background a bit more and set themes and templates and things like that. So I do still heavily use that. And if I had my way, I would never do a presentation that isn't in advanced slides because this just like treats presentations as notes, as code, as plain text files, the way that they should be. The next one is advanced tables. This is like undersold. I love Markdown, but doing tables in Markdown is not the best experience. Um, maybe I can show you that. So this is a brand new note. And the way that you would normally create tables in Markdown is you use this pipe character. You have like the column one name here and then column two name and then you would have to go to the next line and then do this and then three things like that and then three more dashes and then a pipe character and then it actually makes it into a table so then for each one you would have to do this is a column column one value and then another pipe and then call to value so that's how it usually works and that makes it into a table when you render it there's an easier way and that's with advanced tables with advanced tables enabled so you can do the same thing name one name two and then you just hit enter and it's nicely formatted it for you and then you can type something really long here and then you tab and it went over to the next column already so you didn't have to do the pipe yourself you also notice that it adjusted so that it is nicely formatted so even if there's something here when you hit enter you see how that pipe is kind of because of the white space um, next to what I typed, it's kind of not in line with the rest of the name two pipes. When I hit enter, then it just like formats it really nicely. Such a simple thing, but yeah, I use tables a lot in Markdown. And so I always have that enabled. Banners is a plugin that's really just for TTRPGs. I mean, you can use it for other things. It basically does the Notion thing where in Notion you can set like a cover for your notebook or whatever, and it just has this nice image. So you can use it for anything, but I mainly use it for TTRPGs. Better word count is a funny one. Okay. This is not just for TTRPGs, but I also do use it for TTRPGs. So this is a way to kind of highlight some text and then it'll show you how many words were in that text. I actually use this to track how many words I my character does for the sending spell, but I also use it for things like when I respond to a CFP, a call for papers or a call for speakers to presentations, they usually want an abstract that is, you know, exactly 150 words or whatever it is. And that's what I use it for just to be able to see exactly how many words is in each one. I have the buttons plugin as well. This is a little hit or miss. Um, I've found that it is stable in some things, but it isn't stable in others. 
So for example, in my TTRPG one, I have a session button here and it used to work, but for some reason it no longer does and I'm not entirely sure why. One thing that I found out was this thing inexplicably sometimes just gets hard coded. And so I actually haven't been using it in this context and I've just been using templates to add new sessions. However, in some contexts, like for this Kickstarter I've backed, if I click on a new crowdfunding project, it works really well. New project here. Yeah, so that button worked really well and I'm not entirely sure why. This behavior is kind of talked about. I can't remember where I read or heard the developer Shabigom talk about buttons, but they did say that they're working on something new. They are aware of some of the flakiness that surrounds buttons. But the thing is like being able to physically click a button and have something happen is just so cool that I still put up with its quirks. ChatGPT MD. Okay, so I have this and Text Generator as the AI kind of plugins. I do use them sometimes, but I am also still afraid of sending information out onto the internet. And I find myself being really paranoid. Whenever I use it, I open up like the developer tools on the side here and I look at the network and see like, what is it actually sending to the internet? And honestly, I think most people should do the same. I think that there are a lot of AI apps in Obsidian that are sending more information to other people's servers that you don't control than you might think or that they might disclose. So I keep this disabled. I probably should just delete it here because I do all of my kind of AI experimentation in test vaults now anyway. So there you go. I have 48 plugins, less than 50. I do have checklist. I have this disabled right now because I don't really do task management in Obsidian anymore. I have done different iterations of this. I know the tasks plugin is super popular. I use checklist when I was using it for task management. Sometimes I still like it, but most of the time I don't. So I just keep this disabled. The copy button for code blocks. Okay, I can show this quickly. I don't think I've ever talked about this and it's occasionally asked about in videos. So if I go to regular expressions, so this is a code block written in Python. So I'm going to actually show two plugins in one in this one that I haven't mentioned yet, but while we're here, the first is this copy all button. So if I click on this one, I can see that it's copied to clipboard. And then what I can do is I can put this in my IDE or wherever else I wanted it and it's just yeah I could like go into it and then highlight it you know and then copy it but it's just easier sometimes to just do it with a click. The second one is editor syntax highlight. I also get questions about this because and we're kind of preempting it a little bit so if I disable this this is what the Python actually looks like. Even if I'm setting Python as the language in the code block, it's just kind of, you know, bland. But since you're setting the language anyway, editor syntax highlight lets you highlight it according to that language of syntax, the way that you might expect from an IDE. So if we go into that again, now it's like all nice and colored. And by the way, this works for front matter as well. Ooh, sneak peek. This is an obsidian feature that I'm testing right now, but it also does this cool highlight where it, it just has the property in a different color than everything else. So I find that useful, especially since I have quite a few notes that have code blocks in them. It, it just helps to kind of distinguish between each thing and helps me understand it. Then there's data view. I have talked about this so much, still super useful. It's in my top 10 plugins wouldn't be without it. Dice roller, I've also mentioned quite a bit. I use it to actually roll dice in TTRPGs. I also use it to do things like randomly show me a note that has the TVZ or to be processed tag for me. 
and it just is a great tool for sparking randomness. I use it to roll on random tables that I've put together for like test heuristics or things like that. Lots of things you could do with Dice Roller. I talked about editor syntax highlight already. Now Etherpad is something that's an interesting concept, but I think is not quite there. One of the issues of it is that it relies on this other project called Etherpad, which you have to host separately. So I host Etherpad on my own instance in DigitalOcean. Then I connect that instance to this Etherpad plugin and I can send specific Obsidian notes to Etherpad. It's supposed to be kind of like Google Docs, in practicality, it's not as good as Google Docs. It doesn't really do comments as well. And it, while it does do two-way sync, it's not as robust as I would like. If you're a Patreon, I already did a Patreon exclusive video on this. So if you'd like to join my Patreon and see exclusive videos, then you can click on the link up there. I've also talked about Excalibrain a lot and Excaladraw. These two are kind of related because Excalibrain uses Excaladraw and requires it. Excaladraw is a separate app actually, but the Obsidian Excaladraw plugin in particular brings that functionality of that app into Obsidian. It is basically Canvas, but on steroids. Um, it can do way more than Canvas can. You can put images, you can draw freehand, it does some OCR, um, you can do mind maps, you can you know, link to certain parts of an image the way you would a section of a note. So many things you can do with it. Check out the video that I've created on that and the video on Excalibrain, which builds upon Excaladraw and instead turns it into a supercharged graph view. So both of those I use quite heavily. Fantasy Calendar is also something that I really love. A fun fact is that I started using it for TTRPGs, but I actually use it more for my content calendar now. So if I, I even have a shortcut for it, this is like how I track everything that I'm doing in my personal life and also at work. It's color coded. There are some issues with like text wrapping. Jeremy, maybe you could fix that. But I still haven't found anything that is as good and as simple to use. Oh, Fantasy Stat Blocks is a good one. This is another TTRPG only plugin and I use it for monsters and also for NPCs sometimes. I've shown that in a few TTRPG videos, so I won't show that here. Hider is a very simple one. It's by Capano, who is Stefan Ango, the CEO of Obsidian. He created the minimal theme and a lot of his work is based on this idea of like less is more and so I actually really like Hyder and it does a very simple thing it gets rid of certain elements on on the screen so I used it to get rid of this toolbar that was here that was so ugly that was constantly filling up with different plugins I don't like to use it and as a result I think my Obsidian workspace just looks so much cleaner and less distracting. Initiative Tracker I still use heavily for TTRPGs, I've also talked about that. Kanban is something that I still use. I have tried to use projects, I'm trying to migrate everything into projects, however Project still doesn't have like a full Kanban view where you can drag and drop the cards. And so I'm in this weird position where I am doing both. I am using the, the front matter for both right now. So I'm using the front matter for projects and I am also using a Kanban card board. So I always have this enabled as well. List callouts, so simple, but also so good. It's by MG Myers, and it is just so that if I open a new note here, it is kind of like an abbreviated version of a callout. So typically you would insert a callout like this, and this is what it would look like. You can also do list callouts. So if it's within a list, you can't really add a callout in it because there's like a dash in front of it. And so instead, what you can do with this plugin enabled is do things like, this is a great idea. So I have an Obsidian Lists callout plugin page, and here are the things that you can do. 
So all of it is based on just using something after the bullet point so that you can kind of style it in a little bit of a different way. This doesn't show up in publish though, so there's that. But within Obsidian, it's pretty cool. Okay, we've got to move a little bit faster here because there's a lot more to go. Okay, meld and crit. This is something that I use really for very private notes, like therapy sessions and coaching sessions. And it's a way to basically password protect your vault. And there is no way out. Like there's no forgot your password. If you forget it, then you've forgotten it. So it's a good way to encrypt things. Minimal theme settings is a plugin that is based around the minimal theme itself. And I turn it on when I go back to minimal, but I'm on a Nupachin right now. Note refactor is a really good one where I think I've shown it before and it lets you kind of have a very long note and then just highlight something and say, okay, create a new note. And the first heading on my highlight should be the file name of that note. Just a little bit of a quality of life improvement when you're refactoring your notes, which I do a lot. Novel word count. This is like, I, I like this plugin, but it is just very difficult to deal with. Sometimes it makes my vault quite slow. So I only enable it in certain situations when I really need to know the word or page count within my vault. It is pretty cool when, when it works. I just wish it were a little bit more performant for larger vaults. Oh, this is, um, this is a plugin that I was working on as a way to learn about plugins. I don't have anything to demonstrate right now. So I kind of forgot about this plugin and I don't really have something good to show you. Okay, maybe I can show you kind of like an idea of how it works. This is a plugin that I made in an effort to learn about how to make plugins, but like many, many things that I do, I never kind of really finished it and I'd like to go back to it at some point. But at its base, it's a TTRPG related plugin specifically for D&D Beyond. I still have one group that uses D&D Beyond and I'm a healer and I like for the HP of different people to be updated within my initiative tracker. I know it's super niche, but it was like something cool that I was doing. So for example, um, my character Skura, which is what it's set to do right now, has an HP of 51. I know because she just had a long rest. So what I could do, what I would normally do is go in here and then heal her up to full. However, I was looking for a way to do that for different, for multiple people at once, and also to not have to manually do it. So instead, there is a command that I can do, which right now is that, and it says updated Skouris HP 51 out of 51. And you'll see that this one was updated too. So my idea was that it could update the entire party's HP and maybe other things as well. Like it can actually also change, you know, the AC or, or whatever based on what is on D&D Beyond. So it's more like a learning project for me, but there you go. That's, that's a plugin that I have. Here's Obsidian Leaflet. This is a way to, it was supposed to be for maps, but I really only use it for like TTRPG maps. So I think I've shown it before, but here's what it looks like. It is an interactive map. So I provided the image, but then I can also like hover over any of these and then link them to a certain other note. So for example, if I click on that, it goes to the Bromkiln Hills and I can even have my own custom image. So this is an NPC in our game and I'm tracking her movements or her party's movements just so that I know where she is. I've got TFT Hackers Brat plugin. Oh, this is undersold really. It's not really useful unless you like to beta test plugins, but this essentially makes it really easy to try out, you know, alpha versions of plugins even before they're actually officially released. I do this a lot. And so I have a whole bunch of plugins here that I have set up to work with it. There's also the Strange New Worlds plugin. This is interesting also by TFT Hacker. I like it, but I found that for some of my notes, there was definitely a performance hit. So I don't always enable it, but let's go ahead and enable that just to show you what it looks like. So 
every link here is parsed and there's a number that's shown next to it. That number is basically the number of backlinks. So number of other nodes that link to this node. So there are 69 other nodes where I've mentioned Wally. And this one pops up like a little hover window where I can go over where exactly those notes were. So it can be pretty handy sometimes. And you know what? I haven't tried this in a while. Um, I know I tried an earlier version and it did have performance updates, but this page is pretty link heavy and I'm not seeing the slowness that I saw before. So maybe I'll actually just leave it enabled. TFT Hacker does some really cool stuff. So back here, OmniSearch, look, I tried it. It's supposed to be a better search engine for your notes. I found it slow and confusing and the UI was very cluttered. I mean, I'm not entirely sure. I've installed it, but not enabled it right now. Omnivore is another one that I really want to get into. It's basically a Readwise alternative. I love that it is open source and I would really want to switch to it, except that at this point, Readwise just has so many integrations. I believe Omnivore only has a limited amount of things that it can process highlights for, like it can't do podcasts or tweets or anything like that. So this is something that I'm keeping an eye on, but I'm not using actively. Outliner is something that I installed right away because I came from Rome Research and I was really missing the ability to work with outlines the way that you can with Rome Research. So I always enable that and it does things like um, you can, in a list, you can kind of move something up and down. So like 91 is there now and I've moved it before 90. So I'm just doing that with keyboard shortcuts. It also does this thing where it has like an indentation line so that, you know, when you have a lot of things like this and you're not sure which ones are lined up, those indentation lines, which Rome had by default, shows you where you are. And then you can also independently fold them so that you can fold this entire thing if you just want the parent one or you can just fold at this level so it does a lot of cool things like that that i enjoy with bullet points all right periodic notes i have i think two full videos talking about how i use periodic notes Periodic Notes is a plugin that lets you create notes according to different formats for regular review. So daily, weekly, monthly, and even quarterly. It can even let you have multiple sets of those. So you can have like one for personal, one for work. This next one is Postgres SQL for Obsidian. If you use Postgres, this idea might also be appealing to you. This is a way to parse your metadata and put it in a Postgres database. And once it's in the database, you could use something like Grafana to visualize it. So I really love this idea. I've played around with it a little bit, but I think there are still a few things that I need for it to really be useful. So I would like to get back to this, which is why it's still installed, but it's not enabled for now. I've done a live stream with Marcus Olson, who is a friend of mine, an ex-colleague, and he was the one that created Projects. Projects is a framework and a kind of like a platform for, he says project planning, but it can really be visualization of anything. So the idea is that you have the one database and you have multiple views of the same data. Excellent idea and one that is definitely worth watching out for. There's query control as well. I like to have like the, the backlinks here and query control adds these extra icons so that I can, you know, copy results or search through them or, or sort the order. It's very reminiscent of what's available in the search panel. And it just puts them right there with an easy reach if I want to use them. Quick add is something I've done a video about. Excellent, excellent plugin. Love it so much. It's in my top 10 plugins of Obsidian of all time. Highly, highly recommended. I use it so much. So just to give you an idea, I said I wouldn't talk about it, but like just look at how many macros and, and how many other things I've set up for it. Like that's that's how much I use it. And it is one of those things that saves me time. Reading time just says how long something will take to read. So like right now, the untitled note that we created together says it's a four minute read. 
I'm not entirely sure how useful that is. I think at this point I was drafting blog posts in Obsidian, whereas now I just create notes most of the time and then do the blog posts as kind of a hodgepodge of different Obsidian notes. Anyway, I don't use it as much as I have, but actually I think it's good to be cognizant of how much reading time a note takes. And maybe that's even more useful than like number of characters or words or something like that. Readwise official, I've done many videos about, love Readwise, been an avid user of Readwise for a very long time, paid a lot of money out of my own pocket even before I had a YouTube channel. I'm an extreme fan of Readwise and I had a hand in prompting the team, if I might say so myself, to create this plugin because before this I created a Python um, script to do the same thing, to bring my Readwise highlights into Obsidian. Of course, this is a way better implemented version than my hacky script. So I use it all the time and it runs every half hour, I believe. Setting search, such a simple thing, but it just adds the search field here so that if you know of a setting that you want to use, but you don't know which plugin it's in or where it is in the options and it will search everything too, core plugins and community plugins, it is super useful. So I always enable that, just a small thing, but useful. Show current file path is another one. I don't know why it doesn't do this by default. So like right now you can see at the bottom here, it says TTRPGs, temporary white circle and world. So it shows the folder path that it's in. It kind of has like breadcrumbs of the different folders that that particular file is in. And that's usually how I spot when a note is in the wrong folder. Like because of my templates, I had it created in a certain folder that I didn't want it in. So then I know to move it. Spaced repetition, I've briefly talked about. This is a flashcard plugin. Honestly, my language learning has been on the fritz lately because I've been traveling quite a bit, but I do want to get back to it. So it's going to be enabled so that I can use it at any time. But it's cool because it brings a lot of Anki functionality, if you know that app, into Obsidian. And all you need to do is let it parse your markdown notes and then assign a tag to that note so it knows what language it is. And then it creates flashcards based on spaced repetition. So it's not just a binary yes or no, like did you know it or didn't you? But like if you knew it really well, it'll show it to you maybe in a month. But if you got the right answer, but maybe weren't so sure about it, then maybe it'll show it to you in a week. So it, it is a little bit smarter. Style settings is something just for appearances. A lot of Obsidian themes use style settings as a way to add like optional features that you can toggle on or off, or maybe you can adjust like some, some colors or something like that. You can of course go into the CSS yourself. I don't know about you, but I don't like going into the CSS and I am not a front end developer. So I am pretty lost when I look at CSS and style settings just makes it easy. So I always have that. Ooh, supercharged links. I was not a fan of this at first. I think Leah Ferguson told me about it um, when I had her on my channel, when I was interviewing her, but now I don't know why I didn't like it. So what it does is very simple. It adds an icon to a note based on certain conditions. So if we go to supercharged links here, so you can set conditions. So if there's a note that has in the front matter type colon PC, then you should put this icon, this rainbow icon next to it and so on. And it goes down. You can also, instead of using the front matter, you can use the path instead. And it just means that it is very easy to tell when you have a lot of text, whether something you're linking to, Okay, this is a TTRPG thing I just realized. Okay, so I do have like blogs and presentations. See, not just TTRPG, but also TTRPGs. So like the, all of these have dice, D6 is in front of them because they're all session notes. These have people because these are factions. So here they're kind of separated out already. But you know, for example, if I wrote Paylor, if I didn't have supercharged links, you might not know whether that's an NPC or a faction or a place. 
but because there's a lightning symbol in front of it, and that doesn't actually change this link, by the way, it just changes how it's displayed. I can tell at a glance that this is a deity in this world. So love supercharged links. I don't know why it took me so long to understand how awesome it was. Okay, we're in the home stretch. I've talked a lot about Templator, so I will skip that. Still love it, still use it heavily. And I also use it a lot for running JavaScript. And that is just a little bit of an extra way that I automate some things in my vault. Text extractor, I, I think I had to have this for OmniSearch, but I don't really need OCR, I guess. Um, so I think I'm going to delete this one. So we're down to 47 plugins. This is great. I should make more videos like this so I end up with fewer plugins. Text generator I mentioned earlier is an AI based one. This and ChatGPT MD, I think are the best contenders right now. However, I'm still kind of wary about doing this in my main vault. So I've disabled it for now. I have translate, you know what? I typically have found myself not needing this. This is a way to translate. I prefer to use DeepL. I really loved it because it doesn't just use Google Translate, it uses DeepL, which I've found is a better, has better language algorithms than Google Translate. But the reality is when I'm typing a note, I usually know what it means already, so I don't need to translate it. So I'm actually going to delete this. Great plugin if you need that. So what are we down to 46? That's awesome. Okay, so the last one is Vault Changelog. Vault Changelog was created by this person, Bader Buslikin. Vault Changelog is a plugin that I use quite a bit actually. And what it does is it creates this changelog page. And in my case, I have it set up. Ooh, the untitled one is there. I have it set up to put down the last 500 notes that I've worked on and the date and the time. So that is it. So now I've got 46 plugins. Awesome. That was a long list of plugins, but I do constantly get this question from many people who just want to know like all of the plugins that I'm using now. I do want to say though, this isn't like the best plugins that are out there for Obsidian. Some plugins I really see the value of, but maybe not for me or maybe not for my vault. I don't think that if, if you are a developer and I don't have your plugin, I've probably tried it. I rotate plugins in all the time. And some of the plugins that I showed were not necessarily ones that were like tried and tested. They were just being tested. So this is a current snapshot of the plugins that I have. And let me know in the comments if there were some plugins that maybe you use that you think I should, because I'm always interested in seeing other plugins. If you'd like to see more about what my top 10 Obsidian community plugins list would look like, then check out this video where I go over just that. Salamat sa inyong lahat and happy Pride Month. Thanks for watching.